Sorry a little bit about your your, your health, uh, but in case it's not too tough for you, I mean. You see, you see now I'm not jumping all, uh, all over around, you see. Now I'm a bit quiet. So uh, if you will not jump and don't eat too much, and uh, <laughs> especially if they cut out your stomach, <laughs> it'll be good. So, but uh, you see, I was preparing this talk, assuming that uh, the master program students would mostly come. So, uh, so wouldn't be like this. I could uh, discuss more interesting questions here. But we will see. Yes. But I'm waiting for questions. Yeah. So is uh, your definition of uh, <clears throat> observable, uh, can you reconstruct uh, Costello and uh, uh, factorization algebra? Uh, you see, uh, we started just recently, with one of my students reading Castella Guillem book uh, sentence after sentence. And uh, it is here where I found the discrepancy. So uh, I'm willing, you see, I am a tricky man. You see, I put this discussion of observables in this way, in order to reach Castello and start to discuss with him observables. And uh, maybe he will teach me something about observables. Maybe I will tell him something about observables. In any case, it would be good for observables. Can you say again what, what's the difference? What was his definition and what's your ah. definition? So the definition from the book is you have uh, a ball of radius, say, one. You cut out a ball of radius, say, uh, a small r. You have uh, a map. And then you take a limit of this map. And, and it is attributed to Graham that he defined observables this way. So. Uh, I kind of disagree because if you do it in conformal field theory, this way. So of course you can do you can apply this this procedure, uh, say in free conformal field theory, where we know everything. And you know that if you just take the ball and project. You project to, to zero dimension. You are losing uh, everything. So it's not a proper way to do. So zero, of course, or one is, a, is an observable, but it's not the only observable you have. So it's much better to do the following, to pick up specific vector that would correspond to a field of dimension delta, multiply it by small r to the power minus delta to increase this contribution and take a limit. And surprise, surprise, you will get a finite limit. And it is this limit that would be a local observable. Oh, so you're when you pull that so your complaint is that they don't take into account the conformal dimension? No, no, uh, no. My complaint is that according to the book, maybe not according, not according to Graham, because uh, in the book it's written that they wrote it based on uh, private talks. 
So somebody could misunderstood somebody. But if you actually take this ball, it's actually an annulus that is conformal equivalent to the cylinder. And if you apply it uh, to everything, you will get just projection to the lowest uh, energy level, actually to zero. Uh, it's for it's for ground states, but we need uh, all operators. Sorry, no, they are not all observables. So in order to get all observable, you need to be a bit more tricky. You need to pick up special vector that is such that it that that it is not blowing up when you multiply it to r to the power minus delta r to the power minus delta tries tries you to blow up however the fact that you have conformal energy l naught plus l naught bar put you down in the combination you have a limit it's so simple Yeah, I, th I think the discrepancy uh, somehow arises from that I, you want to use, like say, comparing delta function with smooth function. Which one you you, you prefer? And somehow no, it's it, it's not it's not about this. It's just just imagine cylinder. Ah, let me put it this way. Suppose you have a cylinder, and you would like to ah even simpler. Suppose uh, you have a timeline, long timeline, and you want to measure a spectrum in Euclidean signature. Mm -hmm. You put the state, it uh, decouples, it, 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 it vanishes. The decouples, it vanishes because it has positive energy. So how do you want to see the spectrum? In order to see the spectrum having this uh, long line as a tool, you need to amplify. If you amplify too much, say you take uh, the state of energy E and you amplify it with a factor uh, like 2E, a thing would diverge. It means that you have no limit. Bad luck. But uh, if you amplify with exactly the same strength as things are decaying, you will get a finite limit. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, actually, this should be an exercise so in this, Siegel. So this is like, uh, for example, in, in this uh, castello Guinan approach, they're talking about this Factor Nei algebras, but you really actually have uh, pointed out uh, this module structure rep representations that which somehow is is missing in uh, in that approach. For example, I guess you are talking about for, ex for example in two dimensional conformal case like you are working with either like higher algebras or vertex algebras, but also importantly you need this uh, like a uh, modules representations like uh, of vertex operator algebras and yes. That's somehow the missing information. I think that's like, is, is that what you, what you, what you have in mind? Uh, missing information. No, I, I'm uh, talking about the, you see, when, when Castell and Guillen were talking about it, they were just saying that uh, Graham says this. So for me, it's the only information. I just say that, uh, Probably they mis mis misinterpret him because, uh, as you see from the photo, he, he couldn't make such stupid mistake. Maybe he meant exactly exactly what I mean, because because these limits is not their approach, and also it's of course a problem for factorization algebra. So observables are there are different observables. Now we know there are different Wilson lines. By the way, not only Wilson lines, as we know from Edward Wheaton's papers, 
there are graphs, Wilson graphs. You can write a graph on a three manifold, uh, equip it with uh, representations and put uh, intertwiners into vertices. You will get very nice representation, very nice observable. Mm -hmm. It's not clear what are we going to observe with this observable, but it's definitely a nice observable. And uh, of course, uh, there could be a question how to understand it. Since there are no fields. Okay. So, but the, the resolution that you propose, it would work in conformal theory, right? Yeah, I thought you wanted a definition that's more general. No, no not only in conformal, it's universal. But that's a related to another defect on the, on the Wilson line, I mean, or Wilson loops. So, we, so, so I would actually, so, so, so there are Wilson loops. You need, oh, okay, Tchoft. Okay, we like Tchoft, mm -hmm. yes? He is also a nice man. Yeah. So Tchoft introduced Tchoft lines. Yes. So we need to understand uh, in which sense Tchoft lines are lines. How, how can we do it? we can make Hoft holes. Then we put some boundary conditions there. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying we put boundary conditions, uh, we pick a vector. And then we try to take a limit. So it is uh, related uh, to uh, conformal dimensions in the twisted sector in two-dimensional theory. So when you have a vortex, but, but but if you want to have conformal dimension, if you have multi, want to multiply by this r to the power conformal dimension, you need to have conformal theory. Yes. So when I, when I was talking about conformal dimension, it was example from conformal ah. theory. Okay. So in but, general, uh, you just have a se sequence of uh, vectors associated yes. to this. Okay. Yes. I prefer not to say sequence because sequence is discrete. It's better to say family. Family, okay, family. sure. Uh, in in what sense it converges? That's something I missed. So, uh, if you have a family, and if you plug it in, you uh, have an object uh, in the space uh, that is not moving. So you plug. Ah, okay, so it's it's kind of like weak convergence in the sense of under. Okay. And and you may check that it doesn't matter under which correlator, because uh, Cole, you know, mm -hmm. you can. Uh, it, it's enough to consider a ball where it happens, because mm -hmm. you can always. Uh, if you th if you speak about local things, it's always in the ball. However, if you speak about Wilson lines or Tchoft lines, it should be much more interesting. So in particular, uh, it's interesting to see anomalous uh, re reaction to diffeomorphisms of these uh, lines depending on the state that stays, uh, that stays on them. You see, in conformal field theories, when you have a vortex, you you should keep in mind that you don't only have only one vortex. You have a huge space of states associated with this Hilbert space, with this vortex. All these uh, friends and the relatives of a rabbit just just make a hole and they are already there and you need to study all of them but what's interesting is that nobody studied it for a line yeah, maybe of course it's hard but yeah. maybe in a billion theory it's uh, it's an interesting problem i don't know uh, i'm just curious uh, But when people are talking about dualities, say, in three-dimensional theories, they would definitely have to address this problem. I mean, line observables. 
And here is the question, uh, how would uh, Costello with factorization address line observables? Well, line observable theory is, is, is there in, in this definition because it's, it's for any open subset. So you can have an open neighborhood of the line or circle in, in any non-trivial topology. And also the limit uh, goes to zero for, for some powers. But, but, it, but it's, for this limit, somehow it's a particular distribution. So that's, uh, that's another, it's anyway a, a function of the field in, in some sense. Okay, so so here is my ignorance. I actually started reading this book together with my student. Found this thing about Siegel. Mm -hmm. Found also one. Uh, I say misprint. I mean, condition of tensor product is not well justified. And then I'm waiting until my student would bring me new portion of Gwilin and Costello or Costello and Gwilin. By the way, when we speak about uh, Siegel theory, uh, the most interesting thing here is uh, the deformation theory. Because uh, suppose you have a theory so how do you deform? Okay, I, I, I'll I'll come to this. Yeah, maybe maybe we can continue and just yes, yes, yes. The, the way. So. Yes. So it's very good to have an organizer. And uh, I'm sorry for not having a board. Okay, so we can go further. Oh, so here this I wrote for students with the complexes. And here, the only thing I wanted to say is that in order to have a complex, you do not need to have uh, Z grading. It's enough to have Z2. And here is this uh, long uh, dispute between different schools, Z versus Z2. And I am a proponent of Z2 school. It's a school from, from super manifolds. Is Z2 more non perturbative Yes. Yes, you, you, you are right. I know you know it. You know it very well. Yes, of course. You may say it non-perturbative, I may say it global, it's the same. Okay, so here I gave definition of the run, just uh, because I'll use the run later on. Here is pour Chevalier, Chevalier BRST, complex. What's interesting is that works of Chevalier was at the beginning of the 50s, and uh, BRST like 70s, and, uh, and they basically do not refer to each other. They don't understand that it's the same thing. So it's a poor relation between physics and mathematics. Maybe right now I'm also trying to invent something, but uh, Lurier would say that it's written in his chapter number six somewhere. Hmm? Good. Okay, still, so when I speak about complex, of course, uh, I want to write down the homological vector field. It's a good complex, such that Chevalier and uh, the RAM were particular cases of this. And uh, also, uh, I explained what DGA is, DGL, sorry. 
and basically i wrote it down uh, keeping in mind that maybe natan would come come in and uh, see that uh, he should think about his uh, own complex in the in the homological sense because he is always trying to find some symmetry and uh, okay all these uh, slides are, are just to show that uh, it is crazy to call all differential BRST. First of all, they are all Chevalier. Second, uh, all the all they are, they are particular cases of uh, homological vector field. Okay, so it was the moral why I wrote it down. I wanted to tell it to students. Okay. Now we come to this logical, uh, higher topological theories. So, so here, so here I move together with uh, Siegel and Dirac in the way that they never moved, okay? So they considered the uh, matrix, they considered the uh, complex structures, but they rarely considered uh, PT of uh, matrix or complex structures. So PT means that you have tangent bundle and you inverse of parity of the fiber. And basically functions on PT geom are just differential forms on geom. That's why the main object that carries this letter I in order to show respect to Feynman belongs to differential forms times some tensor, tensors of vector spaces. Okay. Now, of course, we go in vector spaces to complexes with differential that is not, that disappeared from this slide. But there was a differential. As a complexes with differential Q. Okay. And so we impose additional condition. So what kind of uh, conditions can you impose in such generality? First, you, you impose condition to be a functor. It's good, but you need to say something else. And of course, this is condition of total closeness. So the main object, the functor, the value of functor <coughs> on the cobo on the cobodism, also okay. known as uh, Andre. I suggest maybe yes. you, can, you can you can enlarge your uh, the file a little bit, like if we scale it uh, in, inside the word, so it uh, could be easier to 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 view from. Yeah, yes, or uh, smaller, bigger. I think it can can still a little bit bigger. A little, a little more, I guess. Yes, but but Q somehow oh. disappeared. <laughs> okay, I think this is good. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so additional condition. So if you have a if you have everything canonical, and you have differential, you you may guess what could be additional condition. Only closeness. You have no choice. Differential is a toy with which you can play only one game about are you close or not, right? So I had to underline this additional condition. So I'm sorry. Total closeness.
So you apply the RAM along the differential forms on GeoM. <coughs> <clears throat> and you also apply Q on the sign of complexes. And uh, you claim and you demand that it should be zero. That's it. With this data, you cannot write any other equation. <clears throat> any other natural equation. <laughs> so if you omit one of these two terms it will be meaningless but if you put them together it's already interesting okay let us come to example quantum mechanics now the object i is a differential form on r plus times endomorphisms of v okay this evolution operator and this higher topological condition reads as dti plus commutator qi equals to zero So here I, I think I cheated a bit, but uh, there is a universal solution. I forgot to write how you can get this universal solution. This universal solution is, of course, the homotopical one. Do you see that this I is homotopical one? Well, it's the inverse, basically. So it's it's exponent of D plus Q applied to TG. So if you are exact, you're homotopical zero. If you exponentiate homotopical zero, you, you get homotopical one, right? That allows you not to write formulas. So here is this great formula, e to the th plus dtg. And there was a condition that G squares to zero. Maybe there was a way to weaken this condition, but I, I haven't studied it honestly. Because all my examples fit this condition. So G is a super partner of the Hamiltonian. So maybe people say super partner in physics. Uh, maybe the proper way to say that G is homotopy of Hamiltonian. I don't know. One way or another, but the formula doesn't affect the formula. Okay. And here we come to examples. First example is real Hodge theory. That we use in gauge fixing many times. It's called Lorentz gauge fixing. By the way, this Lorentz is, is not the same Lorentz as Lorentz group. As Pasha Mnyov told me. There is a second example. 
where Q is the same. However, G is a substitution of a vector field on the manifold. And Hamiltonian turns out to be Lie derivative. So this thing was first studied by Edward Witten in his paper on 1982. And first five years, there was no, almost no reference to this paper. Nobody had understood him because what he actually did, he did the combination of two homotopies, number one and number two, trying to explain that uh, it doesn't matter what is your homotopy. In any case, you are computing a homology. So let, let, later people appreciated his effort. So why, if you ask me why I love number two, I would tell you because it's Hamiltonian of the one dimensional A model. So there is such a model. That is one dimensional analog of uh, two dimensional A model or Grom of Witten model and being one dimensional is much simpler and uh, we studied it with uh, Nikrasov and Frankel with Frankel and Nikrasov and then later on uh, we got some formula and Frankel wrote it on the body of uh, his lover in the movie. Okay. Still, uh, still, I like this model because it's very explicit. You may ask many questions here. It's very simple enumerative problem. It's also a problem. Uh, in Arnold style style. So it's easy to explain different enumerative problem when you work with this model. And also this model, uh, this Hamiltonian is used in uh, Foucault theory because uh, there was a time when Foucault was young. And when Foucault was young, he visited ITEP with a huge uh, stock of paper. And this paper was covered by trees. And he really wanted to find someone who will understand his trees. It was the very beginning of, uh, maybe it's the end of the 80s, first year of 90s. And these trees, were nothing but the Feynman diagrams, of course, with the Hamiltonian of this type. And here there are, there is also interesting enumerative problem. So, so it's a good example. It's a good example. But I also example number three. So in example number number three, you see that uh, no matter which quantum mechanics you have, you can always embed it into the, into hematopically topological quantum mechanics. So you should just uh, enlarge the space of states a little bit. Just turn them multiplied by C squared. And then you can write down Q and G. And you see that your, <coughs> that your uh, physical Hamiltonian, so you see what you are doing. 
you have a physical system, physical system with good Hamiltonian. You just uh, double, you just enlarge, you just tensor it with, uh, with nothing, with C square. And immediately with zero Hamiltonian, and immediately you have this topological homotopical homotopical topological theory. So today I decided not to write down uh, Lagrangians because today, only today, I am against, I am against great Feynman. I follow uh, Dirac Siegel approach. No plan constant, no Lagrangians, no fields, only local observables. So this model number three would be understood from the Lagrangian point of view as a particle with a BC system. And this is of course a prototype of uh, bosonic string in two dimensions. And this, this model was studied by Warren Siegel, another Siegel. But he studied it with ghosts, uh, you know. But what I try to show in point number three, that you do not need to see any ghosts, no ghosts, just a model. And when I'll describe uh, so-called uh, standard particle, I will try to avoid ghosts uh, as much as possible. Yes. Now in this higher or homotopy, topological quantum field theory, the main object is differential form on the space of ge geometrical data. And this differential form can be integrated along various cycles like Gromov-Witten invariants do. In particular, in dimension sigma, one dimension of sigma of cobordism equals two, real dimension. It can be integrated against modular space of complex structures. Mm -hmm. However, however, in dimension one, for observables we get the one dimensional analog of Witten's universal string. Maybe you remember that I started with Witten's paper of 1992 about universal string in two dimensions. So there is universal particle. And here is how, how we are writing uh, this differential form. So here is the form, here is the top form. You see, I put all DTs down. Because in Witten's universal string, he also considers the top four. By the way, in the, in the theories like model three, you cannot write down any other differential forms. You can write only top four. It's surprising. So, I decided to stop here before because uh, these things are of course related to deformations. But uh, I decided to talk about deformations later because uh, when you talk about deformations, you need to cover a lot of material. You cannot cover it in two slides. But you see, at least I made uh, a circle. 
I started today with Wheaton's universal string, and I ended with a one-dimensional version of Wheaton's universal string. So, uh, so I hope I'm moving in the right direction. Okay, so now I want to hear, okay, critics, comments, whatever. Questions? Hmm. I think everybody left. Oh, um, I mean, I, I, we didn't. So uh, they ask. Uh, you see, I try to be very elementary. I mean, maybe you could explain why, like. Uh, this uh, this universal particle is universal. In what in what sense is universal? Ah, of course, of course. So, universal particle is universal because uh, universal particle is a universal solution to to the second equation. So, once again. There are two equations. One equation finally turned out to be the equation staying a statement that it is a functor, symmetric monoidal functor, nothing else. And uh, now it turns out that it's possible that uh, this functor, that, that this functor, is not only a functor. You can act uh, by differentials on this functor. So if you can act by differentials on this functor, you have only one reasonable condition. You may ask this functor to be closed. So solution to this system of being a functor and being closed is as universal as you can imagine. I mean, and this is uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics, right? No. Th th this is what I call, okay, you may say that it's a supersymmetric quantum mechanics, but you may also say that this is, uh, that this is uh, exactness of energy momentum temperature, uh, exactness of Hamiltonian. So if you have a quantum mechanics, it has, uh, what, what, what it has? It has Hamiltonian, okay? Because it's a functor. Now, it's interesting that the closeness of evolution implies that Hamiltonian is exact. So maybe it's the only, non-trivial thing here that closeness implies exactly and if you ask me how can i explain that closeness implies exactness i would say that uh, i need to think but from the formulas you may check that functorality plus closeness implies exactness of the hamiltonian But I think you also have like the, for, for example, in the Hodge theory, uh, Hamiltonian is not exact, right? Exact. Come on. I mean, it's... The Laplacian is exact. Hamiltonian is Laplacian. It's the main tool. 
Was that Hamiltonian? Yes, exactly. Oh, okay, yes, uh, sure. So uh, the very idea of Hodge theory is that you have exact Hamiltonian. So Hamiltonian is strong. Yes, it's 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 not something. It's it's something serious, but it is exact. And when it applies this strength to differential forms, it brings it to harmonic representative. And uh, similarly, in the Morse theory, you also have a Lie derivative that is again exact. But if you apply the derivative, you take everything to critical points, right? So some so something could be strong, but exact. Okay. So what I want to stress is that. Uh, in in explanation of this phenomena in one dimension, I only use the fact that dimension is one. In dimension one, everything has uh, explicit solution. You can classify everything. Then you can study uh, peculiarities of special representations. It's interesting. But on the general ground, you just say quantum mechanics. So, so what is this higher TQFT in dimension one? Quantum mechanics with exact Hamiltonian. So would you be a physicist? You would say, you might think that this exact Hamiltonian happens because there are some kind of fermions that are canceling some kind of bosons and all this blah, blah, blah. So example number three shows that it is not the case. You do not need to be, you don't need to have a lot of fermions to make uh, Hamiltonian exact. You take very huge system, 1,000 of electrons, I, I don't know what. Hamiltonian of the Earth, okay? And you just multiply it by C square. Of course, C, C square uh, is C1 uh, slash 1. I need to show the, the, the parity. And immediately this total Hamiltonian becomes exact. And this is not a curiosity. It's a well-known uh, physical system that would be called the uh, one dimensional ma matter plus BC system. I, I just wanted uh, to extract the result from the description. People used to say that when you study relativistic particles, blah, 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 you need to gauge fix one dimensional gravity, blah, blah, blah. And that's why at the end of the day, you get this system. So what I try to show is that uh, without these words about one dimensional gravity and the relativistic particle, you can just have this thing. Because it's one multiplication computation. that sigma plus anti-commutes with sigma minus by one. 
okay? Because they are uh, gamma matrices in dimension two. By the way, it was also discovered by Dirac. So today is his day. Ah, so first person to discover this in physics was Dirac, of course. He discovers the system number three, where Hamiltonian could be one for any. Lyova. Yeah. Is it clear why this is very general? I mean, I, I, I thought you, you, you meant some kind of uh, universality uh, of this. Uh, uh, in one dimension, in one dimension, it's universal solution. Like I mean, quantum mechanics, I mean, in one uh, dimension. But I mean, in one dimension, uh, in one dimension, there is simpler universal solution, which is just uh, Hamiltonian being uh, uh, exact. You do not need uh, the deformation uh, phi. So sometimes, so so the, so the, there are uh, several representations. So the condition is exactness of Hamiltonian in dimension one. But uh, what I wanted to stress, I wanted to stress that uh, this uh, theory in dimension one is just a particular case of the general theory. So these conditions of being uh, functor and being uh, close could be applied in any dimensions. However, being functor has a very explicit solution in dimension one and uh, being uh, exact and being closed to, and being totally closed also has very explicit solution in uh, dimension one. However, even these solutions in dimension one have different representations, very different systems. In particular, if, if I go up, not, no, not in complexes, the model number three, you can easily see when the system has cohomology, it has cohomology exactly when H tilde vanishes otherwise it has no cohomology and let me tell you how this thing works in physics now in physics this h tilde is not Hamilton is not uh, Laplacian in real physics. This H tilde is the Lambertian. So when the Lamb so when the Lambertian is zero, you start having cohomology. When the Lambertian is not zero, you have no cohomology. That's how you localize yourself to the space of solutions to wave equations. In arbitrary in arbitrary dimensions. That's why so-called solutions to linear to linearized equations of motion is of course cohomological condition. 
when you have a, when you solve equation of motion, you start having cohomology. When you don't, you don't have cohomology. Ah, not solve. People use the word obey. If you obey equation of motions, as a bonus, you get cohomology. If you don't obey, as a punishment, you have no cohomology. You may put it this way. Ah, so maybe there is a chat. Once there was a chat. But to see the chat, need to stop the demonstration. Let's see. Mm -hmm. You see, I know what is the I know what is the difference between uh, a real seminar and Zoom seminar. In a real seminar, you may easily find yourself alone in the room. However, in Zoom seminar. That's true, yeah. Okay, so I think that uh, Okay, so somebody, is alive. So uh, I, I, I'd like to, uh, to answer questions, comments. We may discuss something. Yeah, and questions from the audience, I mean. <clears throat> I mean, I have many more, but they must be quite naive, so, like... No, please, you see, it is expected to be the master program. So, we we can see it's definitely not right now, so... <laughs> so, you, you mean that we are not masters? It's hard to be a master, uh, I understand. <laughs> okay, it's a joke. Uh, so please ask naive questions. So, uh, uh, so what's uh, the issue with uh, uh, with defining uh, uh, with defining defining observable observable uh, on a Wilson loop? What's the issue? You, you you mean why it's important? I mean, uh, so okay. I I'm not really familiar with uh, with, uh, with examples. I think so. Uh, so okay. So, so uh, mm, what well, kind? Well, let of... me explain. Let me explain an example. Okay. So you will have some kind of uh, differential one form that you will integrate over this loop actually uh, no it's uh, this is naive approach yeah. so previously so previously people realized that uh, only in physics it's called ten tension in mathematics it's called curvature only curvature of a connection in a billion case is invariant so they were thinking uh, and they found like 100 years ago that uh, 
they were thinking if so called vector potential is observable or not and uh, i forgot the name uh, so it was bomb and some uh, uh, iron of bomb they made iron of bomb experiment they put the beam of electrons around the solenoid trying to see if they would uh, interfere or not mm. and the uh, magnetic field was only inside the solenoid outside the solenoid there was no magnetic field at that moment people found that there is dependence on the magnetic on the current in the solenoid it means that electron actually feels uh, vector potential however vector potential uh, is not gauge invariant however wilson loop of uh, of vector potential namely the monodromy of the connection turns out to be gauge invariant surprise surprise so starting from that moment people said that oh what are observables in gauge theory and there is also at least Russian school, maybe around Polikov and Migdal, who said, oh, we should formulate the gauge theory in terms of gauge invariant observables only. So what are gauge invariant observables? Wilson loops. Because if you have small Wilson loop, it's monodromy. Small monodromy is basically a curvature. Okay. However, there was a big monodromy. Also, people started to started study big monodromies. In the theory of Chern Simons, the curvature is zero everywhere during the life of Chern Simons. So the only way to observe something is to consider the big Wilson loop, non-contractible. And later, uh, this led to not invariance. So this was this story about Wilson loop. And also people were trying to understand confinement. And when people were trying to understand confinement, they said, ah, if there is a confinement, there should be some observable that measures confinement. Good, good idea. So what observable should measure confinement? And they put the following idea. Consider the monodromy along a loop. And let us make this loop bigger and bigger. Then they said, Yes, there is a confinement if the suppression of such observable goes down as an exponential of area. So they say we cannot see these flux tubes because uh, there is no flux in strong, in strong coupling. It's not measurable. But what is measurable? The measurable is the force between quarks, between quark and anti-quark. And if you look at Wilson loop, you may imagine it this way. You first you have nothing, then you have a pair of quark and anti-quark that go away from each other. But of course they would be back. Then they're coming back. So measuring this thing, you see how strong the force between the quark and anti-quark was effectively, while you have no dynamometer to attach it to quark, to measure the force. So people were very interested in this Wilson loop observable. Later on, after great work of Montanin and Olive, who guessed 
duality in uh, super young males. People uh, realized that under this duality, Wilson loop is interchanged with another object. And this object is uh, Tchhoft, magnetic loop. So Tchhoft magnetic loop is uh, analog of Wilson loop with the only difference that you have uh, dual field going around the loop. So it's not a monodromy because in this duality, in this strange, du not strange, it's duality. It's Langland's duality after all. Local things go to non-local. Like in mirror symmetry, when the vertex operator, regular vertex operator, it's called tachyonic, but it's something like exponential of a field, is interchanged with the vortex. And vortex, it's, it's a crazy configuration when you have a hole in the space time. And when you have a full hole in the space time, then uh, bosonic fields could wrap around it. Something very complicated happens. So the same is the Hoft line observable. Hoft invented it by analogy with the vortex. So after Hoft invented it, we need to define it. And under Langland's duality, Hoft uh, goes to Wilson. And this is an exact statement in abelian four dimensional theory. It's easy and it's undoable in dimension four. In order to convince yourself that it happens, you need to study something like M theory. No, it's not that easy. And from this duality, so the glands, geometrical piece of the glands, at least piece of it, follows from this duality. So there is this powerful duality, mountain and olive. And as a, as a consequence of this duality, Wilson loop go to Tchhoft, observable. Hmm? So we so it is justification why time why time sometimes we need line observables. Ah, of course we need line observables in order to understand the knot. Of course, how could I how could I forget about it? The knot. The knot is also a tube cut out of the body of something. By the way, I think it's very bad habit to attach, to attach number to a knot. It's, it's not is not a number, it's an observable. You may act on it by diffeomorphism. You may do many other things with not. You can tie your boots at least, <laughs> if you have boots. So not a something, it's not a number. Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, let's see. Um, any any other questions from the audience? Uh, I think it's uh, almost five. Any questions? 
comments and So once again, I apologize for not having a whiteboard ready. You need because water. of the. <laughs> no, no, no. You see, yes, I cleaned it with vodka, but you know this uh, electromagnetic fields you see were against me today. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I guess like uh, it's almost time. Uh, uh, shall we stop here or today, uh, Andre? Uh, so uh, I, I have a proposal. Okay, yes. so so I was not satisfied with what I presented, but now I think that uh, still I, I can send you the PPT. It's, it's a word file, That'd be helpful. and uh, maybe you may send it to to other people, and maybe some of them will send me just uh, PPT. It's not PPT; it's a word document. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll write a question and send it to. Me. Okay, that's a good idea. We can probably open a website, a blog, something like that for this discussion. I mean, as well. So what what I am also interested in, I'd like to, I, I, I am interested in discussing the side questions because maybe side questions are not that side. Yes. Because question of observable, I think it's very interesting, in particular, uh, like deep anomaly. So mm -hmm. when you when you have and and also different state different states of the knot because we know different states of the vortex, there should be different states of the knot, and uh, in the, just in a billion three dimensional theory, and I don't think that people studied it. Well, it depends on which aspect. I mean. Okay, so in any case, in any case, um, so uh, St. Petersburg people want to have a recorded video. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I think Professor so, helps uh, record these uh, lectures, right? We can probably share this later on and put on this website. By the, uh, so, uh, it's still recording, oh. by the way. It's still recording, by the way. Uh, yes. I, I don't know if it was intended to be like that or just. Um. Okay. So uh, e everything should have the end, and uh, maybe. Okay. Uh, maybe. You, you have some questions, let us put it to the website. Maybe we'll find some interesting topics, questions, directly related or motivated. So I, I found with this uh, line observable. So I uh, now I'm pretty sure that there is something, that, that there are heavy states of line observables does that make it massive or I, I don't know what so, so something is going on here uh, there mm -hmm. so, sorry can can you say i i, I missed what, what what's the thing that you're proposing i am proposing the following it is well known in two dimensional conformal field theories that when you you have so called twisted sector or vortex sector it's not only the ground state that you have there. You have a full tower of excited states. And these excited states have uh, conformal dimensions. And that's why these states uh, non trivially interact with the theomorphism. 
at, at least with the scaling. And if you non trivially interact with scaling, you non trivially interact with the rest. It's a full tower. That's what we know in two dimensions. So called twist, uh, twisted sector, so and so. Uh, I don't see why uh, similar thing is, uh, should, uh, should not appear in dimensional three. And right now, while people are talking about mysterious three dimensional mirror symmetry, So in three dimensions, uh, I, I have not studied this issue, but in three dimensions, there should be gauge fields. They happen to be in three dimensions from time to time. And if you have gauge fields, you have observables. And it's the first time in dimension three when line is something. Because line uh, in dimension two, just cuts you into two pieces. It's just the fact line and uh, nothing to say. So some aspects of vortex lines in three dimensions have been considered by people. Uh, but I, I mean, not, not just vortex lines. I mean, uh, states associated to vortex lines. Like there are states associated to to vortex in dimension two, not only vortex, but uh, the full tower of states. I never thought about it before. Lev start to ask me questions about Wilson line. There's a different way to describe lines when you couple one dimensional system to, to the bulk. And, uh, and you may also engineer these lines from brains and then ask how, how to describe them as quantum mechanics coupled to the bulk. And so this kind of description has been studied. Uh, but not if you the, engineer, it's one thing. Yeah. But uh, you see, it's interesting to look at it from the field theory point of view. Uh, this uh, appro this uh, approaches should not contradict each other. They they are kind of complementary. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, the I don't know how to call it F theory engineering <clears throat> also tells you that there is no notion of field. Uh, so fundamental field uh, in gauge theory is illusion. What you have is kind of singularity and uh, that's it. And you interpret this singularity as if it came from would be fields, especially when they are Higgs. So no fields. So you see, in gauge theory, at least in the Higgs branch, there is no fields, no gauge fields. The only way to have a gauge field is to move all singularities together. That, that that could be done uh, sometimes, yes. So it's so it's very hard to to get fields. I don't I don't think I understand what what you're saying. So suppose we, okay. you are on the F theory. Okay. I, I mean non abelian gauge fields. It's hard to it's hard to get non abelian gauge fields. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the only thing that you have are W bosons and some special points where these W bosons become massless.
you see, I'm looking from the point of view of the Higgs branch. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Okay, but but uh, but at the moment I was talking about ordinary, even abelian three-dimensional gauge theory. So this theory should be studied uh, as thoroughly as uh, two-dimensional Gauss Gaussian model is studied. And if people missed uh, some phenomena there, it's strange. Yeah. There is another reason to study line observables. Let me tell you. Uh, just let us go back to Dirac Siegel. In dimension bigger than one. In dimension one, we know all deformations. They're just deformations of Hamiltonians. They are given by operators and you just integrate these operators over the world line and you deform Hamiltonian, that's it. So all deformations in dimension one are given by deformations by zero observables. However, when we come to higher dimension, life becomes more interesting because uh, just imagine there are one observables and then you can do the following thing. You can try to move these one observables all over the space. And this would be the deformation. You may ask, uh, how do I know that it is a deformation? And I will tell you. When we integrate out some massive field, we have the Feynman diagrams. These Feynman diagrams could be considered as uh, as uh, depicted on uh, on the manifold. So there is such a notion, notion as a deformation uh, with the help of line observables. Peculiarity of this deformation is that these line observables hit the boundaries and therefore they deform the spaces associated to to the boundaries. Interesting thing happens. You deform both the vector spaces and their functor. Hmm? By the way, it's important because when we have, well, what do we think when we have string theory? What are we doing? We are deforming uh, space-time space -time theory with the help of uh, two observable. We take two observable and we move it around. No? But one is less than two. So it's good to start with one dimensional problems. So it's just motivation why uh, I think that uh, one dimensional observables are, wo are worse to be studied, even without supersymmetry. So that's it. But now the time is definitely too late. Yeah, it's a little bit, yeah. So, <clears throat> see, you see, I think maybe it's not a proper idea to have uh, uh, three time periods, 40 plus 40 plus 40. Maybe 40 plus 40 would be enough. Yes, I think, um, I think so, yeah. And uh, we reduce it to once per week and 40 plus 40. I, I think that would be a uh, better time, yes. Okay, so, so what I'll do right now, I will send you a Word file right now. Otherwise, I'll forget. Okay? No problem, yes. So, so 
I, so I can send a file to everybody. Okay, it's not the best file, but uh, it's a file, right? File is a file. Okay, so and you will. Uh, I wanted to redo it, make it nicer, but uh, let it be original. Yeah, but first, okay, so like, uh, as an organizer, I would like like say, as uh, everybody to say thank you, like uh, for the, for the lecture today. You are welcome. Who, uh, yeah, just just for those who are interested in uh, further discussions, probably you can stay. Uh, and 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 Andre gonna share his. Uh, uh, PPT, I guess, to this uh, to this uh, room, right? In this in this uh, meeting room. So it's called BC Retalk One. Okay, L -l -l let it be original. After all, okay, I am not the uh, the artist. Okay, I, I gave this talk, uh, so I I have to report. So, BC Retalk One, Word document. Oh, it's closed. Uh, what is closed? The network is closed. Uh, we can still see you. I mean, yes, but uh, I'm trying to send a file. It says network is closed. Uh, what happened? Hmm. I think I know what happened. It's not it's not your fault. It's my problem. It's a problem with my computer. I'll, uh, I, I I will try to fix it because uh, uh, something. Otherwise, I can make a website and and up, update upload your. You see, uh, in Russian we have a proverb. And okay. this proverb says, uh, it's good to have your spoon where we have a meal. <laughs> okay, so, so I'll save it in some other directory. Mm -hmm. One second, then I'll send it. But I cannot send it here. Uh, so how could it be that my computer blocked my? No, it's impossible. My yeah. computer blo blo blocked. Right. Hi, blocked P. In, in, so it's great Windows. Okay, yeah, so I... I'll. Uh, I'm fighting. Hmm. Oh, so now I'm sharing the screen, yes? So I cannot send. Uh, In order to send, I need to stop sharing the screen. Ah, I, I can share. Mm -hmm. I cannot send it. Uh, I'm trying to share. Send into this room, or what, 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 where where are you sending to? Ah, it goes through one drive. One drive is uh, Gmail, and Gmail is forbidden in China. I'm sorry. Okay, well, I I cannot share it. I don't know why I, I why I cannot share it. I mean, could you like share it in Zoom and? Uh, just have us done. I am trying to share it in Zoom. But I cannot share it in Zoom. Uh, ah. Okay, one second. Uh, I forgot. How how could I stop showing the screen? The, 